Until the early 2000s, Turkey was almost completely dependent on foreign defense technology. Back then, most of its weapons, tanks, and aircraft came straight from the United States. But today, Turkey is one of the world's top unmanned aerial vehicle exporters, leading a drone revolution with systems like the Bayraktar TB2, Akinci, and even the next generation jet powered Kızıl Elma. So, how did a country with almost no defense industry transform into a global powerhouse in just two decades? How did Turkey manage to build high tech drones that are now changing modern warfare? Let's dive in. In 1952, Turkey joined NATO and the Cold War was in full swing. At that time, Turkey had almost no domestically developed defense technology. Many weapons came from the West. Due to rising ethnic tensions in Cyprus, Turkey launched a military operation. The operation quickly achieved its goals, but it triggered a diplomatic crisis. In response to Turkey's intervention in Cyprus, the United States decided to impose a full arms embargo. This embargo not only blocked new weapon sales, but also included spare parts and maintenance support for aircraft, tanks and other military equipment that Turkey had obtained from the US. This situation made it difficult for a NATO member to keep its military fully operational. Around this time, Turkey established key defense companies like Turkish Aerospace Industries and Aselsan. The post-1974 embargo crisis was not only a political tension, but also a catalyst that radically changed Turkey's defense industry policies. This period marked the start of Turkey's move from assembling foreign parts to making its own. The 1990s were a challenging and complex period in Turkey's defense industry history. The Cold War had ended, but the country was now engaged in an intense internal security struggle against the PKK. These operations increased the demand for modern military technology. However, Turkey's production capacity was still limited. Critical weapons, ammunition and intelligence systems were supplied by the US, Germany and partially by Israel. Especially night vision systems, precision guided munitions and high altitude reconnaissance systems were completely dependent on foreign suppliers. Turkey procured Heron unmanned aerial vehicles from Israel. These systems played a critical role in intelligence for counterterrorism. But a serious problem remained. Maintenance, modernization, and data processing for the Herons were largely dependent on Israel. Additionally, relations with Western countries were sometimes tense. Due to human rights violations, operational policies, and regional balances, the US and Europe occasionally applied restrictions on certain weapon systems. As a result, Turkey often had difficulties accessing critical technologies needed on the battlefield. All these developments reminded Turkey of an important truth. If you are fully dependent on a supply chain, you cannot guarantee your own security. This realization made it clear by the 2000s that investment in local and national defense technology was absolutely necessary. And this necessity would later trigger the rapid growth of companies like Baikar and Turkish aerospace industries. The early 2000s marked a new chapter in Turkey's defense industry. This was the time when Baikar tech started to grow and develop important armed drones, which we know as the Bayraktar TB2, Akinci, and Kızıl Elma. These projects would eventually put Turkey on the map as a producer of advanced UAV tech. Initially, the company developed small drone prototypes, and in 2007, it delivered its first tactical UAV, the Bayraktar Mini, to the security forces. The following Bayraktar TB2 project would become a game changer for both the Turkish armed forces and the international defense scene. However, at that time, the TB2 was still in the design phase. In 2014, the first fully automated flight test of the Bayraktar TB2 was completed, and the first serial deliveries began in the same year. In 2016, the TB2 was successfully deployed in a real operation in Syria, introducing the concept of low-cost, high-impact air power on the battlefield. Its operational use highlighted the strategic value of UAV technology for both Turkey and other countries. In Libya, TB2s rendered Russian-made air defense systems ineffective. During the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict between Azerbaijan and Armenia, TB2s played a critical role neutralizing enemy tanks and air defense systems. For the first time, global media and military analysis reports recognized a low-cost but effective UAV model. The TB2's international brand value increased with these operations. However, it was the Russian invasion of Ukraine that pushed Bayraktar into maximum global recognition. Its intelligence and precision strike capabilities received widespread coverage in international media. During this period, the Bayraktar TB2 and Akinci became products that showcased Turkey's defense technologies on the global stage. 
And now everyone had realized a technology that was just assembled had become a game-changing force on the battlefield. Bicar Tech signed export agreements with 35 countries for the TB2. For the larger and more advanced Akinji, export agreements were signed with 15 countries. Bicar Tech derives 83% of its revenue from international exports, amounting to billions of dollars. Selçuk Bayraktar, the chairman of Bicar, became Turkey's highest taxpayer in 2024. So how did Bicar Tech achieve this? The answer is simple, low cost with maximum quality. The Bayraktar TB2 has lower production and operational costs compared to other modern UAVs. For a small country or an army with limited budget, it offers cost-effective air power. The TB2 holds a flight endurance record of 27 hours in a single mission. Its long time in the air provides a major advantage for reconnaissance, surveillance and target identification. Continuous surveillance capability on the field and integration with other tactical platforms is a critical benefit. It can carry laser-guided or GPS-guided munitions, effectively neutralizing targets with minimal civilian risk. Despite being low cost, it delivers high-precision strike capability. Its structure allows different sensors and weapon systems to be integrated easily. Depending on the mission type, it can quickly switch between reconnaissance, surveillance, strike or electronic intelligence rules. Bayraktar Akinci, on the other hand, can stay in the air much longer than the TB2. Its long range makes it ideal for heavy strike missions. It can carry much heavier munitions than the TB2, including guided bombs, rockets and advanced electronic warfare equipment. For international buyers, Akinji offers high technology and strategic operational capability. After these products, Bikartek is preparing to create a revolution with the Kızılelma project. Unlike TB2 and Akinji, Kızılelma is powered by a jet engine, providing much higher speed and the ability to reach targets more quickly. It's designed for a rapid response and sudden attacks on the battlefield. It's capable of stealth operations and can carry air-to-air -air missiles. With advanced autonomous flight systems and sophisticated software infrastructure, it can conduct targeting, attack and guidance with minimal human intervention. On the battlefield, this dramatically reduces reaction time. TB2 is effective in tactical missions, Akinji in strategic reconnaissance in heavy payloads, while Kızılelma combines both roles. It can carry high-speed guided munitions and complete attack missions in a very short time. In terms of reaching critical targets and delivering impact, it outperforms TB2 and Akinji by far. It is also equipped with electronic warfare and advanced sensor models capable of overcoming modern air defense systems. Its advanced weapon systems allow long-range dogfighting capabilities similar to manned combat aircraft. The product is currently in serial production, but not yet widely deployed. But its low cost and practical design are expected to make it a game-changer. Although these vehicles are the most internationally recognized projects, Turkey's drone portfolio is not limited to them. State-supported Turkish Aerospace Industries is also achieving significant milestones. For example, Aksungur is a high-altitude, long-endurance UAV with a heavy payload capacity, serving as a multi-role strategic air platform for reconnaissance, surveillance and strike missions. It holds the record for longest time in air in its class, with a one-ton payload capacity. Besides military applications, it is also used in civilian tasks, including search and rescue, disaster monitoring and damage assessment. Meanwhile, Anka 3 is also one of the most important projects shaping the future of Turkey's defense industry. With stealth design, high speed and a wide range of munitions, it stands out. Its flying wing configuration makes it extremely difficult to detect by radar. Currently in flight testing. Anka 3 is expected to enter mass production in 2026. These developments show that Turkey is no longer merely a follower in defense technology, but a player that produces its own technology and has a voice in the global market. The tactical success of Bayraktar TB2, the strategic capabilities of Akinci, the revolutionary jet-powered design of Kızılelma and Anka 3's stealth abilities, all these projects serve a single purpose, Turkey's full independence in defense. In short, the journey that began with the pressure of an embargo in the 1970s has made Turkey a global leader in unmanned aerial technology, and it seems this is only the beginning. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.